It's the morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. Hey guys, how is it going? And welcome to the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. It is Friday, December 13th, and so happy for you joining us. We are ready to start another day together with the Lord. So subscribe to us on YouTube, do not follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to support us on Patreon. So today we have an exciting podcast for you. We have Until the End with Daniel Baker, the Wednesday Message Word Study, and of course, commentaries, updates, and news on what is happening around the world in this history today. All right, everyone, how are you doing? And I hope you guys are having an amazing and awesome week. It is Friday. It is the last day of the work week. Well, mainly for people who are in careers, but of course, the weekend is the busiest time for all the leaders around the world. And big kudos out to all those uh, leaders that are doing such a great and amazing job. Uh, And even those that might be struggling here and there, just the fact that you are leaders in this history at this time right now is such a great thing. And it is heavy and great righteousness too. Uh, So, Uh, Don't forget, we have Q&A Thursday every single week, so get those questions ready. Send it to me whenever you can, and if you haven't yet, please leave a like and comment for today's video, and let's build our community together, just encouraging and helping each other uh, get through each and every these, uh, getting through all these dark times, the good times, and I hope that we'll really be able to uh, satisfy and be able to help each other out in everything that we do. All right, so super happy for everyone joining us every weekday on the Morning Star Drive. So let's get up and support each other each and every day. This week's Sunday message title, great message. The problem will be solved if you take action. All right, so here it is, guys. It is Friday, December 13th. And for those of you guys born in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, I do believe, well, maybe not the 90s, But I know for sure people born in the 70s 70s and 80s, we know what today is. It is Friday the 13th. Now, I'm not sure if any of you youngins out there know how scary this day is. When I was growing up, it was considered the unluckiest day, right? And uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this. There's actually a movie series out called Friday the 13th Horror Movies. And uh, it's with this uh, serial killer. His name is Jason Voorhees. And he wore a hockey mask and killed people in a place called Crystal Lake. Scary movie. They made an entire franchise off this one. It was like 12, like 10, 15, like 12 or so. I don't know. Forget. There's like so many movies in this series. And, you know, they even had this one movie. It was called Freddy vs. Jason. And once again, only those born in the 70s and 80s will know this. It is, uh, you know... Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. And there's another scary movie series called The Nightmare on Elm Street where there's there's this like um, villain. His name is Freddy Krueger and he has like knives for fingers and he would kill people in their dreams, giving them nightmares and they would die in real life. That kind of stuff, right? So uh, it it was quite crazy, but there was this movie, Freddy versus, um, Jason versus Freddy. And uh, I don't think that was a very scary one. I don't think that was a scary one at all. But uh, yeah, for me, it was crazy scary when I was a kid. I would watch them just to get scared. And uh, I don't know. If you guys are out there and you know the Friday the 13th series, right? The horror movie or the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, put it in the comments below. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on it too. And of course, you know, when you start growing up, you realize that the series are quite ridiculous. It is ridiculous, to be honest, right? Uh, When I was in university, it was more of nostalgia. Well, talk about nostalgia. Okay, here's something more interesting. Uh, I'm thinking about Friday the 13th. I'm thinking about these old movies from the past. But for some reason, uh, it it brings me back to memories of blockbuster video. Yes, I am aging myself right now, but there was there used to be a place on this earth where people would we we never had streaming. We had to go to a store to rent movies. It was like three, four dollars. You get a movie for one night and you have to return it the next day, like these VHS cassette tapes and stuff. But, uh, you know, I I think a lot of the younger people don't know this, but it was, there's something called a video store. 
and they have these tapes that have movies on them and you put them in a in like a VHS player. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, either way. So I was I'm gonna tell you guys this. One of the things that I do miss, and one of the things that uh, streaming does rob people of, I'm, 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 it's a strong word, but I'm going to say that the one thing you're robbed of is the experience, like the movie experience. Before I talk to you guys about, um, you know, the experience of when, when I used to go to the movie theaters, we'd line up for hours before popcorn. It was like such an experience to go to the movie theater. But when you couldn't go to the movie theater... Uh, when I was younger, there was another experience. It was like the second best experience of watching movies, which was going to Blockbuster Video. And I'm going to tell you this, guys. The experience was also amazing going to Blockbuster Video, right? Uh, friends would come over or family. We'd have family gatherings. And we would just go to Blockbuster Video to pick a movie to watch. And it was exciting to get in the car, go to Blockbuster Video, see what movies were available or not. And, you know, a, a lot of times movies would be sold out. And then we'd, you know, then we'd have like two choices. Uh, like if, if like you go to the movie, you go to Blockbuster Video and a brand new movie comes out like Jurassic Park or uh, like Top Gun or something along that line. And they're going to have a wall filled with this video. But because there's no streaming, like everyone would go to Blockbuster Video to rent that one video. And even though they had 20 copies, all of them would be sold out, right? So when you go there, you kind of know, like you hope that the video is available, but it's not, right? You know, like most likely it's not. And you have two choices at that point. The first choice is find another movie. Like, oh, what other movie can we watch kind of thing? Or you go to the clerk and you ask, are there any of like, say, Jurassic Park that's going to be returned today? And if by chance the clerk says, yes, there is one due today, and it's, you know, there's like the, the due date time is usually like 6 p.m. or something along that line. Then the second choice you had was just to wait. And you'd wait there watching people return the videos and you keep asking, was that, is it back? Is it back? Is it back? And we would wait for like 30 minutes for the video to return. And the, it, it was, even that part was exciting just waiting for these videos to come back, you know, come back in and seeing if that video would, would be returned and then you'd get it. And, you know, at Blockbuster Video, we'd buy candy, we'd buy popcorn, just like the movie experience. And then at home, you go there and you try to recreate that movie theater experience. You turn the lights down, you watch the movie on a huge 32-inch screen. Yes, guys, 32 inches was huge back then. Today, what's huge? Huge is like over 70 inches. You're like, whoa, that's a huge TV. But now, like back in my days, because the TVs were, you know, like they were, they were like, they're literally tubes, right? Huge. Like they're super thick. They're not the thin ones that you see today. And 32 inches was huge. And we'd go, you know, we'd be at our friend's house. And if they had a 32-inch TV, we'd all be like, whoa, that's so crazy. And uh, we'd watch the movie, eating popcorn. And it was kind of like a, a more comfortable movie, movie experience watching it on the couch and stuff, right? And yeah, like for me, that was the memories. And these, like, that's, like, that brings back nostalgia. But I think when you watch Netflix today, there's, there's not going to be that experience, right? You'll never have the experience of anticipation, going to Blockbuster, going to the movie theater. Like, you lose that experience. You'll never have it. You'll never remember running out of, you know, uh, a movie and you can't watch it, right? There's, there's not that risk that's involved. So for me, I have tons of like nostalgia, blockbuster, movie theaters and stuff. And nowadays, you know, it's just streaming. It's Netflix and chill. You have Amazon, you have Disney, you have, you know, you have all these other different uh, streaming services. And of course, it is more comfortable. You have bigger TVs, right? Everything is like a, like a good experience. However, however, uh, 
there's, there's nothing to remember from it. There really isn't, right? The streaming, streaming is comfortable, but there's a lot of things that you kind of lose from being too comfortable, right? You just got every single thing at your fingertips, right? I think you could probably say that there is a, you know, there, there is a huge difference of actually going out and spending energy and spending energy and lots of thinking about doing something and having some type of risk rather than getting everything at home. You know, it's like working out. It's different doing it at home than doing it at the gym and even paying for it, even though you could do the same thing at home. And I think you can kind of compare watching Netflix at home compared to going to a movie theater. It's just, it's just different. You're not going to have as many memories. And one thing I don't like about Netflix that I would say that is uh, something that could, that takes away from the experience is that Netflix, you can keep skipping. Like you fast forward, fast forward, you skip, like you have way too much control. Uh, you don't get to see stories flesh out and such. So I would say that that is a pretty negative thing. And that's, I, I would say that that's the same thing I see with YouTube. With YouTube, I'll watch something and I'll just start skip, 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 skip. And I'll move up like one minute, two minutes, three minutes or something along that line. But yeah, it, it's, I know there's, there's, you know, there's pros and cons. Because when I look at today, uh, like a regular size of a TV that most n people normally have is going to be over 40 inches for sure. Most people are in the 45 to 60 inch range as a normal TV, good theater, good sound system, everything else like that. And that's why it's a lot different when I see it. Uh, when, when I like that is way better than, than way back in my time. But yeah, I don't know. That's just, that's just gr some gripes I have as a, as you know, like this old grandpa that's uh, complaining about the, the conveniences we have right now. Either way, right? Uh, yeah, so guys, it is Friday. Uh, how did you guys like the, the Rebel Pastor podcast on Wednesday? Uh, I went over the Animal Kingdom parable, Isaiah chapter 11, which comes from the Sunday message. And... Uh, I, I felt like, oh, this is a great thing to, to post so that people can benefit, especially uh, new members and newcomers, or at least prepare your newcomers for the word. And I think like this is Isaiah chapter 11, verses six through nine, the animal kingdom parable, super popular parable. Most Christians know it and they also believe it literally, right? Like it's supposed to happen at the time. And, and it's interesting because Christians think that this is supposed to happen at the time of the second coming because it never happened at the time of Jesus. And it doesn't really make sense because when you look at the, the context of Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 11 is obviously talking about the first coming because it's talking about the Messiah being born from a lineage, not coming from the sky, not coming from the clouds. Because that's like the second coming imagery is coming from the clouds in the sky, destruction, doom, whatever that kind of stuff is. But from Isaiah chapter 11, it says that from the stump of Jesse, from King David's lineage in Bethlehem, there's going to be the Messiah that is born, right? That is the promise that God gave to, um, God gave to King David, right? So when, when they push off the second coming, it makes no sense because the beginning of the chapter talks about Jesus coming from the lineage of Jesse, which is definitely the first coming. And uh, I think it's something good that people will look at. And even when I was doing, uh, when I was watching the video, when I was making the video and when we did the premiere on Wednesday, yeah, a lot of the, the even the members were like, oh, I didn't know it was about the first coming, but it is, right? And I would say this is something very, very interesting because we are getting a lot more, like not, not lately, but it's been over the last couple of years where Sunsteep talks a lot about internet ministry. And I would say, like, right now, we're in the baby stages in Providence for internet ministry. We're just working out the kinks. We're trying to become more professional with, with time, right? And I would say, like, the biggest benefit that people have, like, that I've heard so far about the Rebel Pastor channel is many members use it for newcomers or new members. And I think that's, you know, for now, I think that's really good. I think it's good enough for now. And I'm hoping that, uh, that a lot of people do gain a lot because one of the other things that I do hear from the Rebel Pastor YouTube channel is that people say is, oh, I never thought that this could be explained so simply, like in just 20 minutes, right? And 
I think that's another way that people are able to learn from that channel also. And, you know, I, I think the questions about, uh, like, especially when it comes to the questions about, there's like so much coming on uh, about internet ministry. And I do say there's going to be more questions and answers right now. And it's true. It's, it's new. There are some things that we are learning along the way. Think about it, guys. I have the highest subscribership in Providence, and I'm only at like 6,000. Uh, let me do a quick check right now. What am I at? 6,100? Something along that line? 6,093, right? So I don't really have a huge following, but... It's number one in Providence when it comes to YouTube, which is like, oh, that's kind of interesting. It's still a small number to be number one, but it just shows that we're in the baby stages, right? It's new. So many things we don't know. So many things that we're learning along the way. And uh, if, even for me, uh, for me is I don't think we're going to get a lot of answers right away because uh, I remember I told you guys that when I do, uh, when I go when we're doing tours in Wollongong, uh, we're learning about how Sunsi made the ambition masterpiece. We're learning about how Sunsi made this and how Sunsi made that. There's a lot of things out there. We look at and we're like, oh, that's what that says. Oh, that's what this says, right? And, and oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, oh, that's that's how Sunsi wants to build it. But then the next day he changes it. And then the next week he changes it. And things are constantly changing as he's learning and growing and reaching new levels to do things in better ways. Right? So a lot of people might think like, oh, but isn't that Sunseam just making a ton of mistakes? And the answer is no, it's not about Sunseam making tons of mistakes. Right? So when you listen to the testimonies of like the building of the Ambition Masterpiece, remember it crumbled five times, which means that he is learning along the way. And as he's learning, God is giving him the materials for the level he's learning at. But when he reaches the sixth time when it's completed, they have the, 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 the most valuable rocks, the rocks that were actually needed, right? And on top of that, uh, he has the skill level to use them, which means that God is not going to give him the most valuable rocks and the most valuable resources and materials from the beginning because he doesn't know how to use it. He doesn't know how to actually make the, the emission masterpiece in the right way. He's learning along the way, right? And God is taking steps you know, there's going to be steps towards the eventual outcome. So things will be done according to God's will. But we also have to remember that, uh, like, say, like, not just the mission masterpiece. What about the new building right next to Sunseem's house? That's a building that should be done in a year, but it's taken already three to four years because there's always new changes, always new things that Sunseem is inspired by learning and growing. And it's what God tells him. And it's step by step. It's that trust we have in God. And now, you know, and it's still being made right now. And I think this could make people stumble and say, oh my gosh, what about this? What about, like, shouldn't it be done in the first shot? Right? If Sunseems really has that mission and is God's history, why shouldn't it be done perfectly from the first try? But if we think this way, then you got to think that, whoa, then I think these people who think this way probably haven't read the Bible very much. Right? It probably didn't. Because all, there's so many stories where things take time, take 40 years, take 400 years, right? And God makes history not by himself. God makes history with human beings. If God was the only one doing the work, everything would be done perfectly from the beginning. But we need to understand that it's a history between God and human beings. It's both of us working together. And we need to learn, right? Value things. We need to, to be able to do things in a higher, uh, higher order, Right? Things have to be done properly, and it's not going to be done properly from the very beginning because we're human and we need to learn. Remember, it's a long history that takes time and effort, and we're learning through the process how to grow, how to perfect ourselves, how to develop uh, ourselves each and every day. Nothing will be done perfectly in the first shot. It's about the ability to grow our mentality and do things the way that God wants according to our level and ability, right? If our level is low, God can work with us only at that level. It's kind of like a child. 
A child is only capable of doing things at the level of a child, and God will work with that child at that level. The child has to grow before God can use the child in a bigger and more powerful way. Best example is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, think about Jesus. He came out when he was perfectly ready, trained, and and made at 30 years old, which means there is a level that he had to reach before he can go out. Why? Well, if, if... if it's not about, you know, how much the, the, human being, the human being actually grows, then why wasn't God using Jesus at 20, at 15, at 10, at 7? Do you know what I mean? We have to grow before God can use us in bigger ways and in more powerful ways, right? Like, internet ministry is going to eventually be done the way God wants, eventually. And eventually, we're going to figure out what is the way that will work best in this history, eventually. And, you know, even... The, the question I think a lot of us are asking, like um, someone was asking too, is like, hey, what about uh, internet ministry? What, what does it mean to evangelize people? What does it mean to make them members? And I think uh, it's, we don't have the right answer yet because we're just moving for the first time. You know, the old, like I said uh, the other day, the only thing we've heard is, is people who are not against us, right? And I think that definition is going to get more defined it's going to grow uh, bigger where we're going to be like, ah, that's what he says, right? And I think that's great. And we can have, uh, you know, like here's, here's something that I think that's really amazing that's coming up the pipeline right now. And it's something that we talked about a lot too. But one thing that Sunsim has approved uh, within the last week is he approved the online church. And it's in the process of building in Korea, which is awesome, right? It has been approved, the online church. which And they're going to build the platform here in Korea using these professionals to make it. And it's going to have a platform where people can use that platform for different languages, right? And they, we were, I was discussing it with the internet department over here. And they're like, yeah, you, and when we start an, internet, an online church, we're going to have a full-time pastor on it. There's going to be a full-time pastor only for the online church, right? And I think that's going to be awesome. Of course, it's still in the begin- building stages, and they said that um, with the amount of time and ability they have at the moment, it's going to take about a year. So we're, going to, we're thinking about end of 2025. But that's still, it's exciting. It's approved. Sunseam sees that it's good. So I think it's something that we can see that slowly but surely, the things are being approved and being made, and we're like, ah, okay, that's what's going on here right? So I hope that, that we will, you know, as, as time goes on, we're going to understand more. As time goes on, we're going to understand better. And uh, we're not going to get all the answers right now. And I hope that, you know, I, I don't think we have the answers yet. I think Sun seems still watching and seeing how it grows. And we're getting step by step, you know, different types of uh, educations, uh, and contact with Sunseam of how we can do online ministry that much better. Of course, uh, I shared with you before, Sunseam is talking about um, bringing people to Woi Myung Dong, buying them food, sharing them, just kind of faith in like faith as you're, you know, showing them the Woi Myung Dong in all the different places too. And, um, you know, for Western countries, it's a little bit more difficult, but we're going to be discussing and figuring out what's the best way for us to do it uh, online ministry in the Western countries also right? So I'm excited about it. I think even for me, uh, regardless if I stay uh, in this position as IMD director or not, regardless of it, I am going to definitely be able to, um, uh, I think one thing that will will be remaining and stay forever for me, not forever, but I think I'll always be working on is internet ministry. And I think it's that important, right? So yeah, uh, that's something I'm excited about waiting to see the developments, waiting to see how God is going to actually make it happen. And I hope that all of us too, um, will be those that will pray, pray for internet ministry to really grow because this is going to be the way that we can build a hundred, well, sorry, a million people, a million people who are our people, right? Those that understand, know us, but are not against us, right? So I think it's going to be exciting and I hope and I pray all of this will be done in Sunseam's lifetime. I really, really hope and pray for this too, right? Um, tonight is the live broadcast for uh, uh, Save the Nation Prayer Night. 
And uh, it's the day before the impeachment vote, which is the 14th Saturday. That's going to be the impeachment vote for the president who, you know, declared martial law. And uh, that's going to be a big prayer night, especially for Korea, the chosen nation, right? And I think, you know, in, some of us might think, well, does that really have to do with us? And I would say absolutely. Right. Just as when you look at today in Christianity, they still look, um, what do you call it? They still uh, look at Israel as a chosen nation and they want to make sure that Israel is doing well too. Right. Because they are Christian and Jesus was an Israelite and they see it as a chosen nation. They see the importance of Israel also. I think also we too have to see it the same way. Because it affects how the chosen nation does, right? So, yeah. So I, I got some pop news that just came up right now. Uh, I'm not going to give you the full information, but uh, I will be traveling. I will be traveling to another country. And uh, you guys will figure out a little bit later which country I actually go to. But uh, I just got the news like maybe five minutes ago. I saw it on my uh, text message like, ooh, this is great. So I'm really, really excited and happy about this. But I will be traveling to another nation. I will be doing uh, my podcast in another nation also. And I'm, I'm very, very excited and looking forward to a quick travel, getting away from... Uh, Getting away from Korea right now because uh, it's like minus three degrees, which, you know, for those of you guys in America, that's like 27 degrees, right? So, yeah, it's, it's cold here and I can't wait to move out. Not move out. I can't wait to travel. But either way, either way. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this so far. If you have any questions or anything else, leave it in the comments below. Uh, yeah, it is Friday. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Hope you guys are going to have an amazing weekend also. Uh, let me know if there's anything exciting or anything going on with you guys too. Okay? So uh, yeah, before we get into the Wednesday message word study, let's get into the first music break of the day. <laughs> On the beach, summertime. summertime. Feel the heat, that's a love paradise. paradise. Holding hands, cool breeze, cloud nine. cloud nine. Make heaven together with you and I. You and I. Sandy walks on the beach, summertime. summertime. Feel the heat, that's a love paradise. Holding hands, cool breeze, cloud nine. Make heaven together with you and I. Hey. Hey, you wanna live with happiness and hope. You gotta live with the one you love the most. And don't forget that even on darkest roads, just by the Lord. And grab your heart. Your tears, a pretty paradise are from the start. Oh, oh. Paradise. All the night breaks darkness. You're like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my home with paradise. Together we're the greatest. Just like the moon and the stars, we light the night. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my home with paradise. He can take you where you wanna go. He can take you where you wanna go. He can take you where you wanna go. 
He can take you where you wanna go. He can show you what you wanna know. He can show you what you wanna know. I have realized I'm not alone because living with you is like my paradise. The night breaks like this, like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my only paradise. Together where the great is, just like the moon and the stars, we light the night. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my only paradise. The night breaks like this, like the sun, yeah, you always shine so bright. And I can't wait to see you, cause you are my only paradise. Right, so let's get into today's Wednesday message word study. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, brand new titles is Only the Lord God and the Holy Spirit, and Taking Action is Strength and Power. I love these two verses that were referenced also. 2 John chapter 1, verse 6. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love right? And John chapter 4, verse 34 says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work, right? So I, I hope that um, this message was a great message and that you guys gained a lot from it. So let's go right into it. So from the, from the very beginning, uh, the message says, the Holy Spirit is giving us a message about the work that we, the lives, should do along with the word she has given us many times lately. So I hope that you'll open, you know, and the Holy Spirit says, open the ears of your heart and spirit and listen well. All right, so let's get into one of the, the first points that was given, which is about knowing and not knowing. And I like this point here that says, the reason people don't take action is because they don't know. Right? The reason why people don't take action is because they don't know. And I think that's something that we have to uh, understand for ourselves too. Sometimes we don't want to take action. Sometimes we're not doing what we're, we're supposed to do. It's because we don't know. We don't really know what's going on. And I, I think it's something that uh, it's something that I've been experiencing as, uh, you know, working in IMD is a lot of times we have so much information, but we have, we're talking sometimes to people that don't have a lot of information. And because of that, they don't know what to do because they just don't know, right? And I think it's something where we have to realize about ourselves is not only, like, we need to be those that want to learn. We need to, want, we, we need to be those people that, like go out and seek information, seek realization. And I like how the message says, and for leaders out there, what should you do, right? The leader said, uh, always educate and teach the members. And I think this is something that I, we were discussing yesterday with the education department. And one of the things that we found that a lot of leaders lack in is how to make educations. You know what I mean? It's not just about, you know, taking the message someone gave and just repeating the exact same thing because I find that not to be education. I don't find that to be education. Like education is not just taking and repeating word for word what something like what someone said, but it's, it's the ability to be able to explain it well so that people say, oh, that's what he meant or that's what we're supposed to do, right? So I hope it's something that we can really... Uh, you know, have that heart, that willingness, not only to educate and teach others, but also we need to have the heart that's willing to learn more too, right? And I think that's going to be a big thing. Uh, another point that it got into was the difference between those who are believers and unbelievers, people who believe in God and don't believe in God, right? So think about this. When you have a believer and, you know, we get, you know, just being a believer, we receive grace of belonging to God, right? We have that grace, but the interesting thing is like, what is the difference is? It's like, but people who believe in God take action believing that God is watching over them. And because of that, we gain things. And here's the part that I thought was most interesting is, even if we gain something through our own actions, 
right? So it's, it wasn't God giving, but we gain because we put our efforts and actions into it. We work fervently thinking God gave it to us. And this is why living a life of faith is good, is because we can rely on God, right? We run and take action more because we believe, you know, we're like, oh, God is with us. God is helping us. God is doing this, right? And then it goes into the definition. What is faith? Faith is about relying on the one you believe in. You run more because you rely on God. A life of faith gives you strength because you rely on God. And I think this is a pretty powerful statement who you believe in. Because because I believe in this person, what happens? I believe in this person. I believe in God who's almighty, all-powerful, that whatever I do, it's because of God. God is doing this for me. And it, this doesn't work with other gods, right? Because the difference is God, right? O other gods are dead. They can't help you. There's no grace that comes from their, the, the false gods. And they're only gaining from their personal actions, but God is a living God and he reigns over all creation, right? He is omnipotent, omniscient, and we're going to gain strength as much as we believe, right? And I think that's something that's going to be a very, very powerful thing for us to, to really get our hearts to, uh, to, to understand around this is because we don't see God, because we don't, you know, we, we don't know when, like God doesn't say to us, I helped you. Oh, and I helped you with that. Oops, I didn't help you with that. We don't know. And because we rely and believe, on, believe in God, we attribute everything to God, right? So, you know, it, it's, and I would say that even in the end, one of the greatest parts about believing in the true God is that in the end, all the suffering, all the things we went through, we gained salvation. Where that is something that you cannot get from false, like from idols and such. We gain salvation. And the, I think the saddest part, like the message was saying is, the saddest part is people who believe in idols, they think they're doing well. They think, they think they're doing great. But in the end, what happens is they go to a spiritual world level that they th they're like, what why am I, here? I can't believe I'm at this. It's completely different from what they thought, right? They think that they're at a much higher level, but when they go to the spiritual world, they're nothing close to it. We, on the other hand, everything we do is meaningful because we gain something in the end, right? What is eternal life? John chapter 17, verse three tells us, right? Eternal life is to believe in the one that God has sent, to truly know, right? We need to believe in the person sent, we have to believe in God, take action in the Holy Spirit according to the words that are given. And we need to be those that are the true counterparts of love to God. And this is when we live forever, right? This is when we truly live forever. And the only way to get out of death is through the real, you know, the, the real true God. And I think we need to, do, we need to know, right, that, and as this is one of the things that a lot of people do struggle with is, uh, Living as a good person, but be not believing in God or believing in an idol, it only benefits your body and helps your like emotion, your heart. That's it. But in order for us to receive salvation, we need to come out of death. That's why the, the words of God, the person that God sent, we have to believe right? It's the only way people receive salvation. And I think it's something that, you know, sometimes you get too relaxed, like, hey, you know, just let them live the life that they want. But we don't realize the desperation. Like God is trying to save everyone desperately because he sees where they're going. And I hope that we can be those that realize that this is where this, this evangelism has to come from. We've lost years of evangelism because of the things that have happened. We've lost years. And I can't imagine what God's heart is actually like at this moment. We only receive salvation through the word, right? Through the one that is sent. Do you remember that there, there's that one point, uh, what, well, there's that one part of the message that says that uh, the Bible says um, the word is like gold, right? And he's like, why, why, is it, why is the word like gold? It's not because gold is expensive. It's because gold doesn't change right? There's tons of expensive foods. There's lots of expensive clothes. There's lots of expensive goods, but they all change, right? 
food changes, right? Clothes change. Like, you know, they, you know, eventually you can't wear them. They, they get holes and stuff. They're all tattered and in rags. Everything expensive, all those things that we see that human beings have made, they all change and disappear. All of it does, right? And that's, that's like one of the powers that we have to realize is the words of God, they are eternal words. What does that mean? Well, think about what we've been listening to for the last 2,000 years in the New Testament time. It's the same word that is unchanging. That's why Matthew 24, was it Matthew 24 verse 35 that says, heaven and earth will pass, but my words will never pass. My words will never pass. The words will always remain, right? And because it is unchanging, this is one of the most powerful things we need to know about the word. That's why we can be taking action in hope because the words that we take action on are eternal. They will never stop. And the one thing that we have to be so thankful for is that the words of God are being given every day. Every day. So listen to it. Act on it. Right? And regardless if, you know, like the message we received this week and people who are listening to this podcast 500 years later will take action on the exact same word and they will be blessed because heaven and earth will pass, but my words will never pass. Right? God is eternal. His words are eternal. Everything that he has given to us is eternal. Right? All of it is. And we need to know that the words of God, even for the 4,000 years of the Old Testament, we still read the Old Testament today. And the principles remain true even from the Old Testament time. That's how much we have to realize and recognize what is happening right now. Like, what are we listening to right now? We listen, the words of the Old Testament, they still remain. The principles, the Ten Commandments still remain. The words of the New Testament still remain. And now we've reached one, one level higher. The Holy Trinity and Jesus, because we are their brides, because we are the ones that follow, what does it mean? It means that they are always taking action upon us right? Always. And of course, it doesn't mean literally like if you're putting out the trash, they're not, you know, th you know, obviously it doesn't mean that they're working on us at that moment. I guess you could say that they work upon us when it's necessary, when it's proper. But in the end, it is us. It is you yourself. We are the ones that have to call out. We have the ones that have to seek God. We are the ones that have to do the work that we have to do. Remember, we've heard this many times. God's not going to help us with the work we need to do. He's not. God helps us out with the work that, uh, with the work that we, God will only help us with the things that we cannot do. And that's why if, if we want to exist, if we want to take, if we want to fulfill God's will, we have to do our part. So I love this point here. It says that even if a person who believes in the Holy Trinity and Jesus takes the wrong path, they're still not going to control us, right? You know, if, think about this. If the Holy Trinity had absolute 100% control over us, then not a single person would go to hell. Not a single person would die in an accident because everyone would be controlled absolutely by perfect beings. But the reason why there are accidents, the reason why there is death, why, why people do go to hell, why there is suffering, is because we have our own responsibilities, right? We have our own responsibilities. God tells us, do, you know, God says, here's the word. Now you need to put into action. The biggest problem we face is we fail to keep the word. The biggest problem we face is, you know, we, we don't do our responsibilities perfectly. Like if you think about that carefully, if really God was controlling everything 100%, no one should die, no one should go to hell right? God does the things that pertain to him and we have to do what we must do. That's absolute. That's like, uh, that's predestination, relative predestination right there, right? God treats us according to how we are. And even like, not just the Old Testament, New Testament, even today, 
God and the Holy Spirit only help with the things that they should help with, right? And as for the work that we must do, right? We got to do it. This one point that was really deep was where, is where like in the message it says, the development of all the arts and culture of the entire world has been achieved because God helped as God, right? God has helped us. And people took action on the rest, and that's why arts and culture were developed. It wasn't just God. God did what he was supposed to do, but on top of it, what was next? People have to take action on the rest of it. So all of us guys, all of us, even just one day of your life, we have to do what we need to do, and it's entirely different from what God does. They're not the same things. God's not going to overlap the responsibilities. Do the work that you should do. Everything that you don't do, it'll never get done. And the perfect example Sansim gave, and here I am living in this area too, Sansim talks about the people of Sammangni, right? That's like the, the town where the church is right below Wemengdung, right? Sansim's like, even now, they still live the same way cultivating their fields, you know, you know, harvesting their rice paddies, barely built houses. Not once have they dug up a pine tree and planted it in their home for cultural and artistic purposes. Things remain the same. And that perfect example is every time I drive down from Obidong, you get to see, even where I am right now, Songmangni, right? I'm there. My office is in Songmangni. So we all got to do the work we must do. Or it, it'll never get done. Like you're talking to look at, you're taking a look at one area, Songmangni, right? Look at this one area and you see the drastic difference between Wolmyongdong and Songmangni. One is completely made every single day and the other isn't. Right? That's just the way it is. If you know, it doesn't even matter if we believe in God. If we don't take action, it's not going to work. And, and the, the thing that's kind of like, uh, it's so ironic is even if you don't believe in God, things work out if you do the work. Right? I, I, I think I, that's, that's pretty crazy when you think about that. And like, here's like the two, two different types of sins or failures. So... You know, like taking action is great. So the word says, if you take action, things will work out great, right? And then we start to live because when we take action, we start to gain things. So there's fun and joy of taking action because we're gaining things from it. But if we don't take action, things don't work out, right? And the, the message says, it's a terrible sin to not take action. It's a terrible sin. And then on top of that, not taking action for yourself or for your brothers and sisters, that is a sin too. So take action and then cry out and let them know, right? Those are two sins. Sin, th th that's a terrible sin of not taking action, not only just for yourself, but even for your brothers and sisters. So the only thing the message says is, yeah, take action, but just don't take action in death. Always take action in the Almighty, in the person he has sent, right? The Holy Spirit said, uh, the word that is given at each time, each week, is not just one meal. It is the word that must be kept even by the descendants for a thousand years. And I think that's just kind of a reminder of how deep and powerful and great these words are. It's that deep, right? Right? Yeah, it's given to us this week. And we try to put it into action. Then we move to the next message next week. But he's like, no, 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 no. These words are going to remain for the next thousand years. Thousand years. Right? The word is the way. It is the truth. It is the light. It is the food. It allows us to succeed and receive blessings in both body and spirit. Right? Right? You know, this one last point that, that God was, that, that was in the message, I thought it's so, it's so powerful because we've heard this many times, but it's like, hey, regardless if you live a big life or a small life, it's not that significant. Why? Because in this world, it's not a place where we live forever. 
Your body just passes through in order to achieve salvation of your spirit. And that's why the will for people to end after living in the world, like that's why there's a will for people to end their lives shortly and then move into the spiritual world. Why? Because this world we're just passing through. We live forever in heaven. We live forever in spirit. We live forever when we receive salvation but, but while worshiping God in this world. We're just passing through for a short time to raise our spirits. And this is something that, that should be so deep in our heads, like, wow, that, you know, think about it. We can, we can die. Like we're, it's not dying. We're going to die. It's so short. What are you trying to gain while you're living here? Why are we that stressed about it? In the end, whether you live rich or poor, whether you are good or bad, whatever it is, we're just passing through. Right? And something once again is like, hey, you're going to live, what, 80, 90 years? Now, if, if you exclude the time you spend sleeping and 20 years growing, your life's about 40 years. It comes and goes. Right? It comes and goes. Like we, we, we can't wait for God to take action for us. You know, we have to be those that really, truly make, you know, realize how important this life is. Right? That example, if you're in a hot room and you're hot, the problem is going to be solved when you open a window or you go outside. There's a lot of work that we all have to do, right? And it's the work that we ourselves have to do. So when I saw this message, I was like, wow, what a powerful message. And I hope it's something that you guys gained a lot from also. But yeah, I was really, it's a moving message. And I hope it's something that we can teach more in the future for educations too. All right. So that's the Wednesday message word study. Hope it's something that you guys gained from. If you have any questions or anything else, please let me know, uh, which means we will move into the... Uh, the final music break of the day before we go into Until the End with Daniel Baker. Y'all ready for this? I'ma dance with you. I'ma dance with you. 
Okay, so let's get into the final segment for today, which is uh, Until the End with Daniel Baker. I'm really looking forward to his uh, podcast as he's kind of making a huge transition. He stopped caddying. He moved back to Incheon with his parents, and he's preparing to go to university. So I hope that you guys will uh, keep encouraging him, pray for him too, so that he can live the life. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool how we get to follow his life too together with him also. All right? So uh, without further ado, let's welcome all the way over from South Korea. This is Daniel Baker with... Until the end. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Do It Until the End podcast. I hope everyone is having an amazing week with the Trinity. Let's have an amazing podcast segment together. I am here in Seoul in a beautiful cafe. And I didn't know, like, in Seoul, like, we're at a pretty busy, high end place, but Wow, this place is really amazing. Like, they have all the Christmas lights up. Uh, it's a very good environment. Uh, the people are amazing. And we're just having a really good time. You know, it's been very interesting these past couple weeks uh, because it feels like during when I was doing my job, I felt like a lot, my job was covering a lot of my uh, disadvantages and. Uh, my shortcomings as a person as uh, to really I was looking at myself and trying to build my character back up I realized that you know my job uh, which was very stable and it had it's good paying it really covered up really masked a lot of my character flaws that I have currently and when I, when all of this you know I, all of the jobs finished up and I started to do uh, and have more time to myself, I realized that uh, one of my biggest character flaws as a person and as a person of Providence uh, is that I don't have the ability or the drive to do something consistently. And this was particularly bad for me because I wanted to do so many things in my life. I wanted to you know, have a really amazing time you know, making money, but also creating a lot of new friends. But it's very hard for me to do anything very consistently. But fortunately for me, as a very, I would say like I'm more of a physical, like, you know, likes to work out, uh, feels a lot of emotion from, you know, progress. And when I felt like I was, wasn't able to do anything consistently, that's when I felt really bad and felt really depressed uh, within my life. Just as you're able to build your spiritual life uh, with the church and with, within Providence, I really tried to find a way to become more consistent. Uh, go into like a situation where I am, it's actually fun for me to become more consistent and I'm able to see progress within my goals. And then if I'm able to do that, I'm able to like connect that to other parts of my life, to my work, and actually find some fun within uh, consistency and progress. Now, this might be different for different people, but for me, personally, it's the gym. And uh, for two weeks now, I've been consistently going to the gym and able to really destroy uh, my body. Like, physically, it feels like every day I'm sore. And that's like, for me, that's like when I wake up and I feel that soreness, and I feel like, oh man, that progress feels nice. It feels amazing to feel this sore. And I think this was the case even when I was a soccer player, right? Even when I was very young, that was like an unconscious joy that I had, and which made it really fun to do, like, like professionally train for soccer. Like, it was, you know, it was very difficult during that moment, but the most enjoyable part was after, the feeling you got after doing that. You know, that was the best part. And then now I'm able to, through the gym, I was able to really find that passion of really consistently uh, improving my body, my physical body. You know, it's very important for me to really realize that I'm making improvements in a tangible way. And that is what makes, uh, at least for me, that's what helps me become more and more consistent. So this is the one thing I really want to recommend to everyone listening to the podcast segment right now. And that is to find environments and find situations and put yourself in situations that really build your character as a person. 
and of course as a bride of God, which is very important for the longevity of、uh, your spiritual life, but also your physical life. It gives you really amazing purpose. Uh, if you really find and tr- put yourself in environments that really deepen your character, and for me, you know,、uh, I don't know because of COVID or、uh, other, you know, traumas I had in the past that I really have to work on and improve on. I really like to or tend to isolate myself sometimes, and that's not really good. Where if I put myself into environments and situations that really improve. My consistency, improve my focus, and improve overall my character. I can become a much better person within Providence. Yeah, that's so. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope everyone has an amazing rest of the week with the Trinity. And to everyone who is going to the end, let's walk this path together. Peace out, guys. Bye bye. And thank you so much, Daniel, for another wonderful episode of Until the End. Hope you guys really, really enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments for him, go ahead, leave it in the comments below. I'm sure he would truly appreciate it. All right. So there it is, guys. That is the end of the Friday、uh, podcast. It's the entire week is done. Hope you guys have an amazing prayer night tonight, and we'll see you guys again on Monday, maybe in another country, on the Morning Star Drive on one one seven point eight. The morning star drive one one seven point eight. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign. Just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like this. I got my head in the zone.